watching The High Road with me, Keith Warren. Brought to you by Timber Creek Outdoors. Welcome to the Texas Hidden Springs Ranch, where this week we're joining up with Mark Davis for his third annual whitetail hunt here. This year, Mark brought along his new bride, Brandy, for the first time. It's my third year coming here, and it's, and it's just amazing to me to be able to actually see the bucks mature. I mean, this is a ranch that's been under an intense management program for a number of years now. Every year, it just continues to get better and better. You know, the first year that I came here, I think about the fifth or sixth buck that I saw was a 154-inch 10-pointer. And he was a great buck. I mean, he really was. I had no idea what was on the ranch, and he turned out to be one of the top bucks that got shot that year, but I never really got to see as many deer as I would have liked to. We sat some blinds after that and saw some bucks. But the second year, I mean, this deer was just, it's still incredible. I can see him hanging on my wall right now. And he, he was a mainframe 10 that had just deep palmated splits in his G3s and had matching splits, as a matter of fact, and matching kickers off his G2s. He scored mid 150s, but he had so much character. He was such a neat looking buck. But this year, I made up my mind, okay, I'm gonna hold out and I'm gonna find me a great buck. Mark is being guided on his hunt by our cameraman, Mark Denman. I got here the first afternoon, I guess, a little bit earlier than I'd planned. And, you know, Mark opened up the door, looked outside, and looked up at the sun. He says, man, you're here early. And I said, yeah, a little bit. And he said, well, let's go hunt. Well, we went out to a spot. He said, you know, sometimes these big bucks, they're more the hunters than you are, and they're hunting the hunters. And so sat down, you know, you know let everything get quiet, and the deer started coming. There was a whole bunch of bucks not what we were looking for. We saw some deer that most hunters would have ground checked in a heartbeat, but they weren't mature. Two, three years from now, you come down here and they will be, they'll be the man. We're almost out of shooting light. We saw an unbelievable amount of bucks, but you shoot age as much as you shoot horns on this place. That's how they get such big deer. Just didn't see the, the old big deer we were looking for. Next morning, we decided to go totally different part of the ranch and see what we could do. Sat up on top of a hill, saw a whole lot of bucks, just a ton of good eights and good tens. Started to get a little bit worried because I hadn't even seen, you know, the, the bucks that were breaking into the top end bucks that we were looking for. He's 20 inches wide all day long. Get him up here a little closer on measuring. His beams aren't very long, but they come out so far. They're probably longer than you think. It's hard to tell when they got a spread like that. That was a really good sit, saw a lot of really good deer, but went away empty handed. This concludes the morning session. You have got to have some discipline on this ranch or you'll be done quick. Like I said, this year I'm going to hold out. I'm not going to do it unless he's full, full grown and they're here. We'll get him this afternoon. We decided that we were going to uh, see if we could build a sneaky with him and we put up a uh, ground blind that was actually on the opposite side of the field from the stand because that's the way the wind was blowing worked like a charm. The, the deer came in and, and we saw some magnums that evening but they were 10 pointers and you know to break into that magic 170 upper 160s you're gonna have to have typically you're gonna have to have 12 points or something just really really special if it's a 10. So that was one of the evenings that I was kind of letting it pass and I, I was thinking to myself man you, you I think you're losing your mind to pass up bucks like that but I went to sleep knowing I was holding to my game plan and getting it, try to get a mainframe 12 and try to break that 170 mark. The next morning we decided, well, let's just go down to where we saw the deer earlier. My guide Mark had been seeing some big bucks there in the last three or four weeks. So we went down there and sat. Well, the buck parade started. I mean, there was just tons of deer down there. We were watching a lot of different bucks and it's funny because there was a couple of uh, just superstar three and a half year olds who are just gonna be dynamite deer in a couple of years and we're watching them in the corner of the field and here all of a sudden I pan back around and look in the opposite end of the field and I said, Mark, where did that buck come from? And he spun back on him and he said, that's one of those mature deer. He said, look at him. He said, take a good look at him and see what you think. 
And I said, well, he's looking like to me, he's a mainframe 12, a split G2s. And I, I said, Mark, I said, you know, that deer's not old enough. And Mark just looked at me and said, look harder. And when I get to looking at him, I realize that he's so far post-mature that he's actually, you can see his backbone. I mean, he had extra skin around the face, but uh, we had a couple of problems. He was in the very back of the field, just like an old man would be. We had a lot of deer between us and him and getting the gun up was enough of a challenge. Then we wanted to make sure the deer's head was up once we got clear. So uh, Mark and I started into what we call our little goat parade we did. I don't know how much of it will make video, but it was pretty funny. Eh, eh, eh. And we go back and forth doing this about five times and every deer in the field is looking at us except the buck we're trying to kill. Finally, I whistled and when I whistled, you know, that was almost a desperation thing. I'd been on this deer for, you know, three minutes in my scope with the safety off, just waiting for him to raise his head, wouldn't do it. He's down. He ain't gonna make wood. That's our big deer. That is a. We looked at that deer a long time. I'm gonna tell you what. We that deer walked out, and he kept getting more points. He's a mainframe 12. He's got splits on his G2s. And it was funny, all the deer we looked at this week, I mean, this has just been amazing. This place is just amazing. We kept finding, you know, 160 inch 10 pointers and just couldn't find a mainframe 12 to push us up, you know, a little bit further. That one's not only a mainframe 12, he's got splits. He splits on his G2s. I mean, he's beautiful deer, chocolate colored rack, mature buck. I mean, we, <laughs> that's a home run right there in anybody's book. I'm gonna go look at him. And look at the palmation on this deer. He got the splits we were talking about. Another sticker right there. So he's a mainframe 12, splits on his G2s. That makes him a 14. That one right there makes him a 15. This one right here makes him a 16. He's got a split brow too. I'm gonna tell you what folks, every single year, Texas Hidden Springs Ranch keeps getting better and better every single year. That's why I guarantee you, I'm coming back. It's just amazing. I mean, you just don't see mainframe 12s like this. I've never killed one. I've never killed a mainframe 12. And this joker right here, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. 16 scorable points. That's what we've been waiting for right there. That makes me not uh, be too terribly upset about uh, passing up that, that mainframe 10. And the mainframe 10 and the mainframe 10 and the mainframe 10. This is unreal. What a deer. He's got character. He's got mass. Got a good spread on him. Unreal. Absolutely unreal. Beams come all the way around, almost touch. Come clear out to the end of his nose and then sweep back around. He's going to have 21, 22 inch beams. What a deer. That's amazing right there. <laughs> Looks like Looks like somebody hit a rocking chair with an ax. <laughs> now it's Brandy's turn, and she's being guided by my wife, Debbie. I am fairly new to hunting. This is actually my fourth season. My husband got me into it. He uh, got me a uh, rifle for Christmas and um, got a little more used to it and was a little used to shooting. I had never shot a rifle before. You know, I still consider myself a newcomer because I mean, I still, you know, continue to learn something new every day. Finally started day breaking and I'm um, getting a little bit lighter. It was still really difficult to see because it was so foggy, but I could just start making out deer and one of the senderos like directly in front of us. So I could tell a couple of them were big bodied. So we watched and watched and as it Got lighter and lighter and able to make out some deer. We had um, several really, really nice bucks came out. I finally saw one in particular that I thought was just really, really unique. Eagle, he's a, a big body deer. Look how far he sticks out there. Jeez, oh, beats. Decided on him, but the problem was I was on the left side and Debbie was on the right side. So we had to, you know, both of us crouch down. We had to switch seats. And once I even switched seats, I had to mess around and get me, you know, up higher and scoot me over a little bit. Finally, when everything got settled, he's walking and it just this seemed like it took forever. I mean, it was probably only a total time of like five minutes, but it was just 
took forever. No, 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 no. He comes back and of course he just turns every which way that you cannot get a good shot off at him. You know, he was severely quartered away, severely quartered toward, decided to turn around, decided to be head on. Finally, finally, he turned broadside and he had his left side to us and I was like, you know, this is now or never. Did I miss him? I don't think I hit him. No, no, no. he got him. He's got his tail. I think I missed him. No, 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 because that's not with him. He's got his tail up. You did. You, you hit him. Oh, yeah. It was a hit. It may have been a little bit back, but it's still Well, you thought you missed. Oh, I told you God, you didn't I miss. I thought I missed Obviously, him. Oh, shot. I thought I missed him. Yeah. He shot a little far back, but not too far back. Oh. I think you double lunged him. Look at him, he's got little crack walls on the end. Oh my god, he's so cool. <laughs> Look at him. Holy cow. Hey. He's awesome. Made it worth your while. Wow. He's nice he mature is so buck. awesome. He is definitely a nice mature buck. He's a good body buck. Wow. He's so beautiful. He's nice and fat, that's for sure. He is. He's a fatty. Congratulations. Oh my gosh, thank you so much. Mm. Thank you so much. I enjoyed it. I did too. This just has been an awesome, awesome experience. Yeah. Uh, this is like, you know, the very first morning I was hunting. I can't believe like the amount of bucks I saw this I morning. I mean, phenomenal. And it was so, it's since just, it was so foggy, it was like really hard to get a take on what you It was. Shoot. It was for a long time until it kind of lifted a little bit and it didn't, it didn't even lift, you know, all the way. It's still no, pretty it's still foggy, foggy out here. You're right. It is. It's just, wow. That is awesome. He's just amazing. He's just an amazing, beautiful. Look at him. Holy cow. <laughs> oh, what awesome. <laughs> I can look anybody dead in the eye and tell you, if you're going to spend the money and you're going to go on a hunt where you want to kill a big deer, look real hard at this video because I promise you, they're not going to be able to put all the bucks on there that we saw on this trip. This is a very special place and I can tell you, if you're going to book hunts, this place is really amazing, and I can tell you, if you're going to book a hunt, you need to go ahead and do it, because I'll go ahead and book my hunt as soon as I get back home and get access to a computer, because I saw some three and a half and four and a half year olds on this hunt, that next year they're going to be the ones that I'm going to spend the time looking for. Saw some five and a half year old ten pointers that if they pulled a couple of more points, all they need is some G5s and they're upper 170s. I can tell you this place is awesome. You need to come and book a hunt. Watch the video. It'll speak for itself. I would just recommend, you know, to, to anyone out there, if, if you ever get the chance, you know, to come and hunt Texas Hidden Springs Ranch, please, please do so. It's just so intensely managed and the guides are just so knowledgeable about the deer. I mean, everything surrounding them, you know, from when they come out to the characteristics, I mean, you know, that they know their deer. They manage it so well. I mean, they know their individual deers and uh, it's just, again, I just can't say enough about how thankful and privileged I feel to be here and I highly suggest that anybody please come here because it's just it was just been an amazing experience and again I'm still I use this word a lot but I, I don't know any other word to use I'm just still awestruck by everything I have seen here what an awesome 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 buck <sighs> yes, look at that. and if you haven't done so lately the next time you see somebody that's a member of our armed forces thank them for the privilege that they give us to be able to get out here and have a safe country and be able to do what we love to do, and that's staying outdoors.